Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog. This episode 549, we are one away from 550, and we're gonna record that uh, today after I post this up, uh, within hopefully an hour of this video going up. Just keep an eye out on my community board or on my social media, but we're gonna do a live stream and we're just gonna hang out and talk for episode 550, uh, you know, because I also wanna celebrate 2,500 subscribers, which we just recently hit, and I wanna thank you guys for that. So we will do that in the next episode, and we'll just do kind of like an AMA. We'll talk about anything, we'll talk about Venom, them, uh, mostly I'm sure, uh, but we'll just talk about other random stuff, whatever you guys want to talk about, and we'll, you know, try to make it like an hour, hour and a half long, you know, maybe longer if I can go longer, but I got to record some interviews today and I got to get some stuff ready for work tomorrow, so it's going to be a busy day for me as usual. I also have an article that I owe my friend Andy, so I got a lot of stuff I got to do, so but we will do the live stream, so after this goes up, you know, just keep an eye out and I will hopefully within an hour of this going up, be able to do the live stream for you guys. So uh, today what we're going to talk about is free comic book day, Spider-Man slash Venom, even though Venom's name's not on the logo here, um, which he was, I think the year before, you know, cause uh, I, we did a thing at Golden Apple with it. So I'm kind of bummed about that, that they didn't give Venom some credit, but he is on the cover at least. And this cover is awesome. It's really great. It's got uh, um, all three characters that are featured in this free comic day book. It seems like they're setting up something with black cat for spider-man if you haven't been reading her main series her you know her um her ongoing series i think it's jed mckay that's writing the main series of black cat and uh, everything jed is setting up over there is is you know it's said you know it's set up for something big uh, apparently for our felicia our you know our main character felicia hardy who is the black cat and she is uh you know been st you know, stealing things from certain people or going on certain heists without stealing things like with the beetle and stuff um and so there's just been she's been going to different places like the fantastic fours you know building and danny rand's building and all this stuff so it's kind of neat i actually like what jed McKay is doing over there and I'll be honest with you there's a couple books out that I may do like a week like two weeks actually I was thinking about this we'll probably do it next season so that a couple trades for these books can come out but there's a Gwen Stacy miniseries going on right now that's actually not too bad there's two issues in it's it's pretty good uh the Mary Jane book is pretty neat actually I read the first trade recently and it's not too bad either uh then obviously we have Scream which we're going to do a whole Scream week coming up in August so make sure you keep an eye out for that so we can try to make some noise for Scream for her you know uh, graphic novel coming out in August hope you know hoping to get Clay and the creative team on that book to get a couple more issues so they can finish their arc I mean I don't know if Marvel will go for that but we're going to try our best to make some noise so we'll have a Scream week but I also want to do a week or two of the, the women of the you know uh you know Sony Marvel Marvel universe of characters or whatever. Uh, so I figured we could talk about the Black Cat comic book, the Mary Jane comic book, the Gwen Stacy comic book, and a couple other you know books we'll get in there. Maybe some of the Mayday Parker stuff. Uh, we'll try to squeeze some stuff in Spider Gwen, things like that. So we'll probably do that next season. You know, in, you know, going into 2021 most likely. But uh, but yeah, what Jed is doing over in Black Cat is pretty neat, and it's you know so this kind of sets that up. It has uh, the Vulture, um, a, you know, coming in looking for some weapons to kind of upgrade his tech and his you know his his battle against the heroes. You know, so he can make sure he can rob banks or whatever the heck he, you know this old man's doing nowadays. And uh, and so he gets some fear gas bomb type things, and Black Cat can't get them away from him. So she activates one and he gets hit with the fear gas. And as he's flying away, he's starting to lose it. So I don't know, maybe we'll see a, a cool, more vicious, you know, vulture at some point who OD'd on this gas or something. I always liked the, the vulture from the animated series, as silly as it was. I liked the idea of him stealing youth and that made him younger. I thought that just gave him like a more of a purpose and he's a vulture. So he's like taking life, you know, like a vulture. I don't know. I just thought that was kind of a cool thing. I, I wish they did that more. And they did it briefly in the comic, uh, very briefly with during the clone saga. Uh, but then he's just gone back to being Adrian Toomes. And I don't know. I think there's fun stories to tell with him having the other ability, but anyway, yeah. So he kind of flies away and he's, you know, doing that. So I think this is more of a setup of a black cat Spider-Man crossover that might happen after this, uh, last remains thing that's you know spider-man's going to be going through and we are going to talk about sins rising there was a one shot that came out this week we'll probably talk about that next week on the show on venom vlog um so that did come out i did read it it was pretty good it's about stan you know the uh, the sin eater and how he comes back you know uh, courtesy of kindred so we'll get into that but this you know the crux of this episode now is just going to be about the venom story in the backup here drawn by ryan segment and written by donnie cates obviously and i gotta say uh Every time I feel like I, I step two two steps forward with Donny Cates and I compliment him and I'm like, hey man, this is great. You're propelling the story in a direction, you know, you know, and you're you're moving things along, and this is good. Every once in a while, he does this thing that's just the most annoying thing in the world. Like, so he writes 
you know, uh, Venom Island. And at the beginning of Venom Island, he kind of does a recap of everything that's happened. And then at the last issue of Venom Island, he does like a 10 page recap, um, you know, about everything that's happened. So I so then it's like, OK, great. So now he gets a free comic book day issue. And guess what he does again? <laughs> it's another recap of Nola's coming, Nola's, you know, Nola's, and it's him talking to the Avengers. It's like a deleted scene. It's like, you know, and everyone, um, and for the first time, She-Hulk and uh, Captain Marvel aren't just like pining over him, like, you know, like they were in the previous issue. They're actually like, what the hell, Eddie? Like, what's going on? So I'm like, hey, look at that. Some personality to these characters. Great job. So I give, you know, Donnie some credit there, but, uh, but this is just everyone being mad at Eddie for hiding a secret, and, you know, like Tony's mad at him and everything like that, and uh, and Cap is trying to be the better person. He's like, look, yeah, this sucks that Eddie kept this from us, but we don't have time. This enemy who takes on Celestials, he's apparently going to come our way soon. Uh, we'll figure out a way to deal with it, you know? Like, And and so I like that Eddie at least, you know, this as far as a character growth moment. He already did this in Venom Island. He came clean with the Avengers and told them what's going to happen. So to get this reiteration and to get a different reaction from the Avengers, because in the Venom Island the book kind of ended before we really saw their full reaction so this is us getting that reaction finally and that's fine but we don't need the recap i know what here's the thing it's a free comic day issue it everyone can grab it there's chances are that a bunch of people who aren't reading venom are going to grab this book and read the back and go whoa what's happening Venom? so i understand a recap purpose for that reason so if Donnie knew he was going to do a recap in this, why do it in Venom Island? Venom Island continues to be that story for me that just, besides Mark Bagley drawing it, which was great, his art's great, but other than that, that was such a waste of paper. That book should just never have existed. All you needed was one epilogue issue, do a giant size issue 20 or something, where Eddie goes, talks to the Avengers like he's doing here, and they get, you know, the Doctor Strange or Thor to separate the Carnage suit from the Venom suit. And then, you know, and and then the then maybe the Carnage suit gets away or something like that. And you could do all that in one issue. Doing the Venom Island thing, it was like, oh, we're going back to the island. And so it's like, oh, cool, we're going to reference continuity. And then once they got there, it didn't matter really what the setting was for the event that happened. It really didn't because it didn't really give Eddie the edge. He he acted like he was going to have the edge and then everything went so wrong that you're just like, well, what was the point? Like, clearly you didn't have a plan, Eddie. So, you know, whatever, you know, I don't know. I don't get it. So, um, so I just find sometimes myself wondering like what, what, you know, what goes through Donnie's mind when it comes to pacing something. And I don't know, I, I guess, you know, he, I'm sure he has reasons for it. I just, I, I can't, I can't figure them out. So they just annoy me. Um, so, uh, so then, yes, so after you spend two pages explaining the end of the world essentially is coming, then you introduce Virus, who is just a guy in a suit. So now I'm wondering if this Virus story, like I'm glad they're going to alternate timelines in it and the maker went back to the Ultimate Universe, because that to me is the intriguing part of the this story arc that's coming up. Virus himself seems like such a waste. It's, it's like you have the end of the world coming. Just get to that, man. This feels like filler. Um, now, I, I, after reading this, I'm still going back and forth on who Virus is. Uh, so now that you guys you guys mentioned this to me, you said this takes place before, um, you know, the issue 26 of Venom. So now we get to see how the suit knows who Virus is and how they know its name is Virus because this guy just shows up and says, yeah, the name's Virus. And uh, but don't worry, you won't have uh, you won't have to remember it for long. And then he just starts unloading on Eddie. And he gets the upper hand on him. You know, he's, he takes him by surprise. Eddie thinks it's Iron Man at first. I thought that was kind of cool. Uh, but clearly it's some kind of Iron Man armor mixed with maybe jury tech, uh, you know, on how to take down, you know, for the, from the jury because uh, it has sonic disruptors and stuff, even though Iron Man suits have those now too. Uh, but at this time, I think it was like, you know, more jury tech. So it seems like a combination of those two things, the yellow on it with the yellow eyes. Um, and then this guy has a glider with pumpkin bombs and the pumpkin bombs, you know, has... The, the Halloween paint or the Venom eyes painted on it. So that's making me think that it, it could be more jack-o'-lantern uh, because this person is actually good at flying on the glider too. I didn't even think about that in issue 26. Um, and so I, I go back and forth. I'm like, is this connected to the, the person Eddie hit with his car? Because I thought that would have been an interesting twist. Like, oh, Eddie hit this kid with his car and that set this villain up. 
now I'm starting to wonder if, if Donnie really did is setting something that like that up. Uh, I'm thinking maybe now this just goes back to issue one where Venom mopped the floor with Jack O' Lantern, and now Jack O' Lantern is you know upgrading his his stuff, and he wants to come after Eddie big time. So I don't know. Like I, I feel like it feels more personal than Jack O' Lantern. So. I'm going, I go back and forth. I'm like, is it someone related to the kid who died or is it Jack Lantern? Those are my two, my choices now. This person knows who Dylan is. That's why I was kind of thinking, oh, well, it could be Jack Lantern because Jack Lantern could figure that kind of stuff out. But also, so would someone who um, maybe their son died and now, and as they're, you know, been researching Eddie, maybe they learned about Eddie having Dylan as a son and they're like, okay, well, now I can take something from him uh, that he took from me. So that's why I'm thinking it could be that kind of revenge thing. Could be them working together. Could be Jack Lantern, you know, too injured to actually do the the deed. So he, you know, so he found this guy who hated Eddie and they're working together. Could be both of them. You know, virus could be two people. Um, so we don't know. But uh, but yeah, I don't know. So the, so the issue didn't start out good for me where it was like recapping the, you know, the, the null stuff again. But in the end, it was just kind of a fun battle between virus and, and venom so you know that's all i just wanted to talk about that for a little bit and and just kind of say any of the artwork was good it's ryan stegman and stuff um and then the suit is like saving eddie eddie breaks you know cracks a couple ribs so the suit helps him that was kind of neat stuff it showed them desperate trying to fight this guy but again at the end of the day it's like you have to add in those other world things to make that interesting that's why that issue 26 i thought was so good because it was like if it was just this where it was like hey null is coming now you got to go fight a guy in an Iron Man knockoff suit. It's like, who gives a crap about a guy in an Iron Man knockoff suit? The Literally, the end of the world is coming. And I know as a writer, you want to you know keep the pressure on Eddie. You don't want him to have a moment to breathe. You want to keep the thing. We talked about that in Absolute Carnage. You want to just keep th having things coming. But I feel like a lot of times Donnie's like, he knows that. He's like, all right, we just got to have things keep happening to Eddie so that way he never gets a moment of rest. But then, but when he does that, he sets things up that don't really pay off. Like, oh, here's a pile of dead bodies that had one minor purpose in absolute carnage and then no purpose beyond that. And you're just like, okay, that basically led the Hulk there, uh, you know, to be part of the battle. And then it also led, uh, you know, Eddie to, you know, for, uh, make one scene where he says maybe Anne's there. And then it's like, no, Anne's not there. And it's like, okay, what's the, what? okay. Um, so I feel like that's where Donnie struggles is like, he's like, Hey, I'm going to set this up. So that's why I'm saying if this virus guy is not connected to that kid that Eddie hit, then that story also feels like it doesn't really matter, you know, to an extent. Like, cause that in Abyss, that that you know, it's it's it, that story was just like, oh, the kid, you know, Eddie hit a kid, and then he, you know, his dad was like, no, you're innocent, you're innocent, and that kind of broke his moral compass a little bit. It's like, okay, so that that served a tiny, tiny purpose, but it feels like that should be a setup to something else with a better payoff, and it and it doesn't have that. If you're gonna add you know, Eddie Brock hitting a child while drunk driving to his origin story, that's got to come back in some way. So if it doesn't here with virus, then I'm kind of confused on why it existed. So that's what I'm saying. And the, or if it's not, you know, uh, you know, because he did kind of set up Jack Lantern in a way. Jack Lantern got his teeth kicked in in the first issue. So if it's Jack Lantern, I'm like, okay, well, that's still a payoff to a setup too. But I feel like the only thing he's going to pay off is Null and everything else he just kind of threw in there to just kind of fill the time for Null. And and I just don't want that to be the case. So, yeah, this issue didn't excite me at all. It's actually really boring, this issue. Uh, even I mean, the fight had a couple cool moments in it, but it, it's boring. It feels like a deleted scene that doesn't really matter to the to the overall story. And uh, and so that's why I'm like, eh. but I feel like someone who's coming into it they might like this, you know, and maybe some of you guys who have been reading all the stuff, you may like it too. And if so, please let me know down in the comments below if you, if you disagree with me. Um, but to me, I found myself enjoying the Black Hat Spider-Man thing more. And, uh, and, and I was like, okay, yeah, that was a little bit better. It, it was a, it was a clear, easy story against the Vulture, you know, it's pretty set up pretty well. Um, this one just felt like a deleted scene from a movie that it's like, oh, it's cool to see a deleted scene. But it, I can see why it was cut. It wasn't very essential. Because uh, like I said, how do you go from, hey, Avengers, the world is about to end, you know, and I'm sorry I didn't tell you before. And they're like, that's whatever, Eddie, get out of here. And then he goes out on the street and then, you know, virus attacks him. I would have almost rather Iron Man attacked him. <laughs> like that would have made more sense if he just fought Iron Man uh, because uh, Iron Man was pissed at him in that room. And maybe Iron Man just like, look, dude, 
you know, it, maybe he projects, maybe that he, you know, beats on Eddie a little bit. And then he says like, why didn't you tell the team? Why didn't you do this? And then maybe Eddie could even say, Hey man, they, as he's bleeding from the mouth or something and the suits like fight back, fight back. And Eddie goes, no, I, I know how to fight back. It's not going to be my fist. And he just looks at Iron Man and says, Hey, why didn't you tell your friends, um, you know, about, you know, uh, like about the Illuminati or something like that. You know, like he could have thrown a secret back in Tony's face. And then, and then you would have realized Tony is projecting his anger and he's hating Eddie because Eddie has done something similar to what Tony's done, where he's kept secrets from people, uh, you know, out of fear of telling them the truth. I think that would have been way better. <laughs> and then you would have got a cool Venom Iron Man fight, kind of. Um, so I don't know. But they had an introduced virus and whatever. So you guys let me know what you think. I talked long enough about this. I got to get this video up soon. So because um, I'm recording it this morning uh, as you know, when it goes up, it's Tuesday morning. And I'm trying to get up as fast as I can. So let me know what your thoughts are of the free comic day Spider-Man issue um, overall, you know, the Venom stuff. What do you think of the Spider-Man stuff? If you read it, what do you think of the Venom stuff? If you read it, let me know down below. And as always, we'll continue our conversation down there. And thank you guys again for 2,500 subscribers and for, you know, us getting to 550 episodes uh, in the next one. I can't wait. It's going to be fun. So, you know, definitely come join us live. If you're watching this, uh, you know, come join us live, hang out with us and let's chat about Venom. Let's chat about anything you guys want to chat about. And we'll talk for maybe hour, hour and a half. It'll be a good time. Thanks so much for watching the show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you in the future. Peace.